Python is a versatile programming language used for a variety of applications, including web development, scientific computing, and machine learning. It can be used for data science with data cleaning, data visualization, statistical analysis, and as mentioned previously, machine learning. But first, let's start with the essentials. To get started, you may want to download Anaconda and install Python that way. Equally, in this video, we'll explore an online collaborative means of accessing Python via the web, this being Google Collab. Feel free to use any method you so choose. Let's start with the basics of Python. First of all, variables. These are a name that you can use to represent and store a value in your program. You assign it with the equal sign. So age equals 25. The variable of age stores the value of 25. Next, we'll go to data types. Python has a variety of built-in data types such as integers, which are whole numbers, floats, which are decimal point numbers, strings, which are textual data, lists, which are an ordered collation of items, tuples, which are similar to lists but are immutable, meaning they cannot be modified after the creation, dictionaries, which uses keywords paired with a value, sets, which is an unordered collection of unique elements, meaning if you have more than one, it will only display once, and they're entirely unique. And finally, booleans. These are true or false values. Now, if this doesn't make sense, don't worry, because we're gonna get into this all later. This is just an overview. Control flow. These are statements that allow you to control the order in which your program executes. Functions. These are reusable blocks of code that perform a specific task. You define it with def, so here we have the function greet, and you call it later by specifying the function via its name. Modules are a code library or file that contains a set of functions that you can import into your application for use later. Using all that we've covered, let's take a look at a simple Python program that covers some of these basics. Here's an example of the code, and you can see we've just put it here in a Word doc for demonstration. This is a comment. A comment is a piece of text that does not execute as code. More of a note. You start that with a hashtag. It means it'll be ignored by Python. So I left a comment here to explain this as variables. Name, which contains the text John, or the string John. Age, which contains the integer 25. And height, which contain the float 1.75. Here's an example of functions within Python. What we're going to do is we want to print hello someone's name how are you doing this is the function and later we will call it we will type greet which is the function name brackets john in place of the name so in this case it would print hello john exclamation mark how are you doing ultimately what i'm trying to get across is a function is a stored block of text that you can call and run later here we are on google collab you can tell by the .ipymb that it is a Python file. Now we can name it and save it to our Google Drive. You can see I've outlined all the things we're going to cover in sum with titles or text and then the code. Let's begin. Firstly, arithmetic operations. This is just your plus, minus, divide to the power of, which is two stars, and mod, which is the percent sign. Mod meaning it returns the remainder after a division. Let's do print 1 plus 1 and it should print 2. There you go. Now strings take single, double quotes or both. For example, you could write hello or hello or both. If you said hello, I can't do this. Now to print a string, as shown previously, you write print with quotation marks. Hello. Let's delete that. Indexing strings. We've assigned the string hello to the variable s. Now each letter of a string accounts to a number, and it always starts with zero. So zero, one, two, three, four. Now if we type S0, which letter do you think it would output? H. There you go, 0 to 3, which is H to L. 
Next, variables. As explained previously, this is a mean to store data. You can also add them together. So we have the variable name, which stores the string Toby. Let's print name or Toby. Now let's try adding them together. Let's say A equals hello and B equals Toby. C would just equal A plus B. If we then printed the C variable, we should get hello Toby. Let's have a space here. Error. A is not defined. Ah, capitalization matters. There you go. Next, print formatting. This means we can print based on information stored within the variable, S is equal to hello. So if I wanted to print the statement, when I meet people, I like to say hello, rather than writing it out every time. I could access the variable through a formatting and calling that variable. Let's run it. It remembered from earlier that S is equal to hello, and we formatted this curly brackets with the variable S. Lists are a sequence of elements within square brackets separated by a comma. Let's create and then print a list to explain this. Bananas, spelled incorrectly. And, um, pears. Okay, then let's just print fruit. This is a dictionary, similar to a list, but using curly brackets rather than squared, and stores items via keys. You can see I've assigned dictionary D. So key one, or whatever you want to call it, equates to the string value. And key two equates to the integer 123. Let's say we want to call the value associated with the first key. We will just print D key one, and this will give you value. Next tuples, which is very similar to a list yet again, except the collection, which is ordered and unchangeable. We can see here, it prints them out. Next sets, moving on very quickly. Again, very similar, except it does not contain duplicates. You can see we have Apple twice but if we print this set it'll only come out once you can see we've done it as a list let's actually sign up the curly brackets and then it will know it's a it's a set and as you can see everything will only come out once comparison operators these are used to compare two values whether they're equal not equal greater than less than greater than or equal to or less than or equal to and this can be used for Boolean operations, so to see if something's a true or false statement. Here, we'll print a is equal to two. We'll assign the variable b to be equal to four. Now, if we print a is not equal to b, it should give out the Boolean value of true, because two and four are different. If, else, elif statements. So if we look at the if statement, it's basically saying if something's true, then print yep. So if one is less than two, print yep, which it will be. You can look at else statements as saying if one is equal to two, remember with the two equal signs, then print first. Else, if it's not, print last. And elif is the same thing, but to check multiple conditions. So you could do if one is equal to two, print this. Else if three is equal to three, print this. Else is the final case, print last. For loops, iterate through a sequence. Let's see this. Here's the sequence, and for numbers in the sequence, print numbers, which it does. While loops perform an action continually until a condition is met. So i is equal to one. Well, i is less than six, print i, but plus one every time. So it doesn't run forever. Functions are a block of code which only runs when it's called. And you can see we define the function and called it my function. And within this function, all it does is print hello, from a function. Let's call it later in the code and it will print it. Now methods. This is a function that belongs to an object and for this we're going to head over to W3Schools to list them all out very clearly for you. Methods are something that could be used within strings, lists, dictionaries and so on. Let's look at it for strings. You can end something with dot lower which will convert a string into lower case. So here we have an example. Question is equal to the input. Give me a letter. 
when we print the variable, we use dot lower at the end to give a lower case. Let's say, instead of a letter, let's input loads of capital case. Enter, and it'll give it in lowercase. Now, finally, let's move on to the projects. Let's take a look at this quiz game. I've already written it out. Let's walk you through it step by step and explain each element and line within this code. Print. Welcome to Toby's quiz. We'll just say, welcome to Toby's quiz. We're going to start an input, which allows the user to type into it with the variable playing. That's where we'll store this input, asking whether they want to play yes or no. If playing, so the input, is not in Y or capital Y, then quit. Essentially, this if statement is saying, if they don't put Y, quit the program. And if not, we continue to the next line, which prints, okay, let's begin. And at this point, because we work top down, score is zero. The next question will assign a variable answer as to what letter does Toby start with? Similar to how we wrote not in before, we could also just write if answer is equals to T or answer is equals to capital T, print correct and add one to the score, else incorrect. Next, answer two. The next question, what does Toby end with? Here's another way we can ensure through a method that we get a lower case. Because say you typed in capital Y, if we didn't specify we wanted a lowercase y here, here, or through using dot lower, it would say incorrect. So we'll automatically make their answer regardless via the dot lower into lowercase and add one point. Then we print, you've completed the game with a score of, here, these curly brackets, out of two to put the score variable in and format it after the fact, else print incorrect. Equally, at the end, I could have put print you got a score of plus score plus questions correct. Try writing this out in the IDE of your choice, Google Collab, Anacondas, Distribution of Python, or otherwise. Here's an example to get you started. We have to define add as the addition of x and y, and it will return x plus y, and so on, through subtract, multiply, and divide. We then ask the user, do they want to use one or add two to subtract, type three to multiply? We get their input, and if they press five, we quit the program. Then we get their input for the numbers, then to the first number and the second number. And if their choice was one, it adds them. If two, it'll subtract them via LF statements finishing with an else. And those are the projects.